Welcome to You and Your Family. Bienvenidos a usted y su familia con su amigo y servidor, Celso Mesías. I would like to start this program with this question. Asking, did you hear before that this affirmation, you are what you think and what you eat? Yes or no? Do you believe it? Could be. Quizás anteriormente usted haya escuchado esta mezcla de proverbio o adagio popular, que somos lo que pensamos o lo que comemos. ¿Cuánto de cierto tiene esta expresión y detrás de ello haya alguna verdad eh, sabia? Quizás en este momento usted, al ver el programa, esté comiendo o se disponga a comer algo. Podría ser importante que se detenga en hacerlo porque hoy vamos a tratar un tema que le puede interesar a su salud y a su bienestar. Vamos a tocar el tema de cuán importante es una nutrición saludable en nuestra alimentación diaria. So, uh, maybe you are watching this program and eating at the same time, or you are going to eat. Uh, could be very important to stop it for your health and your well-being. Because uh, we are going to share very important information um, about the nu healthy nutrition in our food daily. So for that purpose, we have uh, today in our program, you and your family, a uh, special guest, a professional experts that we want to welcome. And they are Beth Schwartz is a registered nurse and the Healthy Weight Management Coordinator for Lancaster General Health. She is the facilitator of the Community Obesity Prevention mm -hmm. Coalition named Lighting Up Lancaster. She works with the Lancaster City and County Communities to increase the number of children maintaining a healthy weight. Mm -hmm. And also, we have uh, Jessica Hilderman. Hilderman, welcome to you and your family. Thank you. Is, uh, she is a registered dietitian for Lancaster General Health. Mm -hmm. She works with our healthy weight manage management programs and teaches learn and shape down. Mm -hmm. Jessica is coming with more than information. Uh, so will be very interesting to share all the information that you bring for you and your family. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Beth and Jessica, uh, why is very important for us, and especially for our children, mm -hmm. uh, healthy nutrition mm -hmm. in our daily food that we eat? Mm -hmm. Well, current research shows that this could be the first generation of children to not outlive their parents because of the healthy, unhealthy food choices that many children are faced with daily. And we find this comes from multiple reasons, um, lack of knowledge. And that's why Jessica's here today, to share more information about making the healthy choice the easy choice. There are many other factors that affect obesity in our society, from lack of activity, safety, marketing to our children, but we need to get back to the basics of eating healthy, whole, simple meals and food. So Jessica is going to share some things about that. Good. So Jessica, how a diet health looks like? A healthy diet is one that looks like a balanced one, first of all. Um, that has all the major food groups in it. And I know that you prepared a chart um, with all the the main food groups that we would need for our health. It has whole grains in it. It has a lot of fruits and vegetables. It's, it's um, 
got beans or other legumes, lentils, peas. Those are really good sources of, um, of protein. It has some low-fat dairy choices in it, and it also has some really good choices of lean proteins, not just plant-based, but also animal-based that have, that include eggs, fish, poultry, that doesn't have a whole lot of fat, and lean beef. Those are just some examples. And it's one that's not high in fat and sugar. So in general, it's balanced. It includes all the major food groups for our health and about the right quantities. And it's limited in sugar, fat, and salt. I should have said salt. But. Bueno, uh, let me say um, the remarks in Spanish. Mm -hmm. uh, Es muy importante para nuestra alimentación de, diaria considerar los factores nutricionales, tanto como lo ha dicho Beth y, y Jessica. Eh, es muy importante que tengamos muy presente este balance y como padres tenemos que uh, ser un poquito más estrictos, sobre todo con nuestros hijos que si son niños y que ellos solamente uh, al tener apetito, pueden simplemente saciar con lo que sea. Pero como dice Jessica y también Beth, tenemos que tratar de que eh, en esta alimentación balanceada sea las proteínas, los granos, eh, que son más saludables, evitando tanto las comidas muy saladas como también los refrescos o jugos muy azucarados. OK. So, uh, definitely, uh, the nutrition facts mm -hmm. are um, very um, important as a parent. Mm -hmm. uh, we must lead this education. Mm -hmm. But what happened with, with us as a parent? Mm -hmm. We are enough educated to consider all these uh, strict mm -hmm. uh, uh, facts in our nutrition, mm -hmm. what happened there? Mm -hmm. We can do something uh, at schools, for example, mm -hmm. or as a teacher, or you that um, you are working at uh, Lancaster General and in this program, what experience that you uh, have, uh, I think, in the daily or weekly, mm -hmm. really terrible cal uh, cases mm -hmm. with a bad really nutrition what do you see in our community mm -hmm. our children well if I could start to speak to that um, we do see about a 60% rate of obesity in overweight and obesity in the adults in Lancaster County so 60% of individuals are battling the problem of weight and we like to educate people to tell them that this problem did not happen overnight. This has happened over a good 30, 40 years where we used to get up and walk and change the television channel. Well, now we use remote controls. We used to push a lawn mower. Now we use a riding mower. So we've begun to have all of these things creep up on us where we used to have children running outside. We, as our, we may have walked to school. We may have had a safe playground. And we're noticing that it's a multi-level problem for people to maintain a healthy weight because of the society that we live in. We've engineered activity out of our lives. Um, the food quality, we tend to lean towards processed food, McDonald's or other fast food dollar value meals, simple, quick meals that we go to. And we've our, our society has slowly, it's just crept up on us. So we, as an organization, as Lighten Up Lancaster, the community organization, are trying to raise awareness about simple things that we can do to get back to the basics. Mm -hmm. And we'll share that throughout. Sure. Um, Beth mentioned the lack of physical activity. And another thing um, that's contributing to, to to not so great health choices or carrying too much weight is the increased portion sizes. I don't know if you've seen resources like this, but it shows how much they've increased over the years. And so um, because we are wanting to get the best value a lot of times for our, our dollar, which makes sense, we all do, um, it might not be the healthiest food choice. So it just shows how with the increased portion size, how much 
how many more calories we're eating, how much more fat, especially the saturated fat, how many more uh, grams of sugar we're taking in, how much more salt we're taking in. So as food portions have just increased in general, people are overeating, over consuming calories, and that's causing the weight gain. So, so that's why we have an imbalance calorie or mm -hmm. right right mm -hmm. uh, we maybe consume more calories that and we're aware yeah. that's why and uh, so increasing uh, whole grains the the um, veggies fruits mm -hmm. uh, I guess uh, seasonal fruits veggies Ideally, because those are usually the types of um, fruits and vegetables or produce that has the, um, it tastes the best, it's in its season, it's usually more affordable, it's easier to incorporate a lot of times, and um, they say it has the most, it's, it's at its peak of nutrition when it's in season. So it's a good idea to access and build your meals around seasonal produce when you can. Mm -hmm. So portion size. Increasing veggies, vegetables, and uh, whole grains. Yes. So, and Celso, can yes, I show sure. you and your audience? I don't know if you can get a close up of this, but this um, my plate is the new, the new um, way that we're teaching people how to build a healthy plate or healthy meals at home. And really, if you can see how half of it has fruits and vegetables on it. That is a wonderful way to meal plan. So it increases the vitamins, the minerals, the fiber that you're taking in, and it increases um, the nutrient density of all of your meals. So if you can start by just real simple, putting on half of your plate, filling it up with fruits and vegetables. And then on a quarter of it, approximately, you wanna put those whole grains. And by whole grains, I mean things like brown rice, or um, oats, or um, whole wheat bread, whole grain breads. What are some other examples of those that I'm missing? Those are the, those are the main ones, ones always, but yeah. your starches, try to get them as whole grain as, as you can most of the time. And then about a quarter of it needs to be that lean protein. So it can be fish, it can be even beans there. Um, that's a good one. Or um, chicken, lean, lean poultry, turkey, um, or lean beef. And so a lot of people will put, you know, half of their plate with the, the, the meats and then put a little bit of vegetables and maybe, you know, a, a side of, of grains. But, but if you can start to get away from the large portions of meat, that's a really good place to start and use those whole grains. And then the low-fat dairy, um, about three servings a day, and that should include um, skim milk or 1%, low-fat yogurt or low-fat cheese. Para decirlo en español, uh, como padres de familia, tenemos que tener muy presente que las porciones que presentamos en los platos de comida uh, deben de tener este modelo ideal, el de que podamos considerar el incremento de vegetales y frutas y fibra, eh, granos, en nuestra comida diaria. Por ejemplo, considerando la mitad del plato que pueda ser eh, incrementado por más vegetales, eh, por más frutas en la dieta diaria. Pues considera, y considera tanto Jessica como Beth de que es ahí donde debemos de empezar a atacar el problema que pueda presentarse posteriormente como una amenaza a la salud de su hijo como la de nosotros como padres, eh, tratándose de el sobrepeso y la obesidad. So, you, uh, Jessica and Beth, brought some stuff that is uh, very common mm -hmm. to see and to taste daily. Uh, can you please show something that you brought, uh, starting with uh, the, sure. what do you have? Sure. What we brought were just, uh, the 
sugar contents of some of the popular drinks that people are drinking. So this is one easy way to improve your diet by getting rid of the sugar that you're drinking in. So I just wanted to show you some of the popular uh, sports drinks or energy drinks that are very common um, have four, approximately 14 teaspoons, sometimes even more. It depends on how big they are. So 14 in teaspoons of sugar. Eight ounces uh, and bottle. And it would be in approximately a 18 ounce bottle. Oh, 18. 18 okay. ounces. So if you're drinking more than that on a daily basis, you can just do the math and add up the teaspoons. Um, By the way, Jessica, mm -hmm. on on a recent article of uh, Lancaster newspapers mm -hmm. uh, talking about uh, how uh, dangerous could be an excessive consumption of sugar. Right. Um, you indicated that the average American uh, consume around 88 uh, grams of sugar. Per day. Per day. Uh, That's a lot more than really we need. High. <laughs> it is high. Because, again, people are very unaware of how much sugar they're actually taking in from the foods that they're eating. So, a lot of sugary cereals or um, snack cookies, cakes, and especially drinks. This is one big one. Um, where, you know, this is a, a popular lemonade and it's got 14 teaspoons of sugar in a, let's see how many ounces, 16 ounces. 16. So again, it's just, that's, that's how it's adding up so quickly is because they, people are very unaware of how much is in the products that they're, they're, t they're eating on a daily basis. So it's easy to get 88 grams of sugar when your foods have that much that's right. in it. And those are popular drinks. Very popular. This is a soda. I'll show you. Um, a soda, 20 ounce soda, about 18 and a half teaspoons. And even juice. Um, mm -hmm. Juices are a big source of, of, of sugar in the diet. And they do have some vitamins and minerals if they're 100%. But really, it's so much better to eat the whole fruit. You're getting fiber, you're getting less calories, getting less sugar in general. So we encourage people to even get rid of juice in their diet and just eat more fruit and stick to only water or low-fat milk as your main beverages. And what about the juice from concentrated? Those are it's not It's the really same kind of thing. Um, it's the same issue. If it's 100%, it will reconstitute to be equivalent to a, um, a drink that's 100% a, a juice that's not reconstituted. Mm -hmm. uh, well, definitely I'm uh, going to reduce the <laughs> Good. dose of sugar. And, um, but what about that difference? Uh, I know that... Um, for example, the, um, the iced tea, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, depends that the season also the consumption of of some drinks increase on summertime, for sure. example, and more uh, sugary drinks in our children and us. But if we have that at home, children uh, definitely are going to consume, right? Right. How can we uh, uh, create uh, good and new habits of consumption, uh, moving to a healthy nutrition. Mm -hmm. How bad uh, we can, as a parent, do this? Mm -hmm. Well, we like to tell everyone it starts with a plan, that you plan what your family is going to eat and drink in the beginning of the week. So you have simple, affordable menus that you routinely go to, that you, when you go to the grocery store, you're just going to purchase those items, that you just simply do not have the soda and the high concentrated sugar juices in your home because we found that if it's there, any of us are going to fall prey to what's mm -hmm. in front of us. So we say it starts with a family plan and that would mean cutting up your vegetables, potentially if you're a working family on the start of your week, having your vegetables cut, prepared. Some families enjoy cooking with crock pots, um, making mass meals that are healthy and freezing. Just start with a plan. and. Mm -hmm. Um, that sh hopefully should help guide some of your choices. Jessica, did you have anything to add? No. That's Very good. good. <laughs> Very good. So, uh, nos mostraron hace 
unos momentos eh, unos ejemplos de lo que consumimos todos los días, como estos uh, refrescos energizantes o aparentes jugos. Pero eh, veíamos cuánto de eh, exceso de azúcar contiene. Eh, Jessica declaró recientemente en un artículo en, publicado en el diario de Lancaster eh, que el promedio de, a, americano eh, consume, uh, varón, consume alrededor de 88 gramos de azúcar diario. Es algo sumamente alto si el consumo promedio eh, normal tolerable es de 36 gramos según la, eh, la asociación, la Heart eh, eh, Association um, y American Heart Association. Y es sumamente peligroso el no tener el cuidado si es que como padres podemos empezar con un plan. Es nuestra responsabilidad poder empezar en planificar eh, una alimentación balanceada en nuestra casa donde tenga muy en claro eh, los eh, factores nutricionales de lo que comemos y de lo que bebemos. So, uh, I would like from you, Beth and Jessica, so, uh, final recommendations, how can uh, do also uh, uh, change all these bad habits and combine with uh, physical activity too at home? But uh, what we can do as a parent uh, with, the, for example, lunch menus at schools. Uh, I have here um, a lunch menu for all the month. And I, we can take care at home. But what I see at school is uh, in the menu just twice or three times a week, uh, pizzas, um, cheeseburgers, uh, pizza da uh, dippers, um, pasta, spaghetti with meat sauce, uh, pasta with meatballs, uh, hot dogs, uh, chicken nuggets. So sounds to me going to the fast food restaurant. Mm -hmm. So what we can uh, do at home, at school, or in the community to get these good nutrition habits? How can we change? And we, as Lighten Up Lancaster County Coalition, we have worked with many food service directors and talked to many schools about the current lunch situation, and some students eat breakfast at school as well. And we understand that they are under severe budget constraints to provide meals um, that do all the meals need to meet governmental nutritional standards, and we recognize that. Um, but we recognize, as you point out, that we do have a, way, a ways to go. So we encourage parents to talk to their educators, to talk to their food service directors, principals, about the quality of food, and, and ask because uh, eventually it will, we're waiting for the new guidelines to be released from the federal government, which should arrive shortly, and hopefully we're going to see that the public has demanded um, an increase in the nutrition standards, and then the government hopefully will re reimburse at the schools at a higher level mm -hmm. to help with some of the budgetary constraints. So we agree that you simply need to just talk to your school, talk to your principals about the situation, and offer to be part of the solution, really. It's something that we can do as a parent mm -hmm. to help. Sure. And I would say just if there is an option to maybe send a few nutritious foods along with your child to school, like an apple that mm -hmm. they can keep in their bag and add to their lunch, or a bag of, of uh, carrots, or um, something to add to the nutritional quality of the meal that they're eating, or just pack their lunch in general. Sometimes that's a healthier way to go. So it just, it really depends on the school, it depends on the options, it depends on the family. But if that is a possibility, I would say maybe plan some nutritious meals for your child to take to school with them and they can eat that as an option if you don't like what's being offered at the school that day. 
Good. So, eh, nosotros como padres de familia, definitivamente somos parte de la solución de este gran problema que amenaza la alimentación, sobre todo la salud de nuestros hijos, de nuestras familias. Participemos más activamente con el cuidado responsable en preparar esas loncheras si van al colegio y poder hablar con los principales, con los profesores, si es necesario, para poder colaborar y aportar eh, una mejor alimentación para nuestros hijos y nuestros estudiantes. Uh, podemos agregar quizás algo más en la lonchera que necesitan nuestros hijos, aparte de lo que puedan estar consumiendo en la escuela. So, eh, no me queda, se nos acabó el programa, el tiempo, y no me queda eh, otro lugar que el de eh, agradecer su participación en el programa. So, thank you very much to participate and uh, helping to build a healthy family, a healthy community. Mm -hmm. Muchas gracias, uh, Jessica uh, y Beth. Thank you for having us. It's thank you. Pleasure. Y con usted hasta una próxima cita. Sí, con usted y su familia. Muchas gracias.